Hi, I'm Lance Suzuki, and this is 1890s Flute versus 2019 Flute. In this video, I'm going to be putting uh, my uh, 2019 Brandon Flute uh, side by side with this Louis Lott Flute uh, from 1892. Uh, so I guess first, let's talk a little bit about the instruments. This Louis Lott, serial number 5196, uh, was completed on January 23rd, 1892. And uh, one time when I was in New York, I did have the great fortune uh, to see a copy of the Lot Ledger so that I could see, um, you know, in his hand uh, when it was completed and who it was uh, completed for. The first owner actually happened to be a professor of flute in Geneva, which I thought was a pretty cool fact about this flute. So um, it is silver plated, C foot, in line. And that's just about it. Um, I'll also show you the head joint cut a little bit so you can get an idea for that and compare it against the Brannon. Now the Brannon was uh, completed pretty recently, uh, just in September 2019. Um, and uh, it is a 10 carat flute uh, with a B foot, a C sharp trill, a split E, and a LaFan style head joint. Uh, so a lot of um, more of the modern conveniences that we've become accustomed to. I'll also give you a close-up of uh, the head joint so you can see um, side by side that it's a little bit wider, uh, a little bit uh, more square uh, than the Louis Lott uh, head joint. Um, also, of course, we have the um, Adler wings. Okay, so let's hear these two flutes side by side. Um, and for this purpose, I've selected a couple of short excerpts uh, from the period of this flute, uh, of the Louis Lot, uh, around 1890, uh, not exactly, but pretty close. Um, so we can get uh, an idea of the kind of music that was being played when this flute was made, um, and then to hear how it sounds on a modern instrument and to see if we think um, any improvements have been made over the past 130 years or so. I guess that's 127 exactly, but who's counting?
Okay, so we're back. Um, I hope you enjoyed those uh, short playing examples. And um, just a few impressions. Uh, so first of all, the scale. Um, now, since uh, the 1890s, uh, certain things have uh, been changed in the design of the flute, particularly the placement and I think the size of the tone holes uh, to improve the scale. And what that means is, is the relative pitch uh, between note to note uh, on the instrument. Um, so I don't know if you noticed, but in, in the Brahms excerpt, um, a lot of places I found really challenging uh, to keep the pitch more even uh, on the Louis lot. It you know kind of wants to be flat. Uh, anytime you go into the right hand, anything in the right, where the right hand is down, it wants to be a little bit flat. Uh, and in the low register, um, boy, it was real. I was really struggling at the end uh, to get a sound out and uh, to not have it be like a half step flat. <laughs> Just to be honest. Um, but in the end, uh, what surprised me about this flute uh, was uh, that it projects a lot better, uh, I think from even a short distance than it does by my ear. Um, when I'm playing it, um, I hear by my ear, it, it just kind of feels like a cotton ball, like I'm playing through a cotton ball. Uh, but actually there is kind of a nice sweet sound to it that I really uh, did appreciate. Now the second biggest difference between these two flutes uh, is the action. And by action, I mean um, the way that the keys move around. And on this Louis lot, when I press a key down, um, I can actually feel a little bit of resistance against my finger, uh, whereas on the brand end, the keys just basically fall with the weight of my fingers. And um, you know, you can, as you can imagine, that would allow you to go a little bit quicker probably, give you more agility, where this one you know, takes a little bit more effort to go quick. Now for me, uh, when I was playing the Dvorak excerpt, for example, um, my fingers tend to fly and they tend to fly away from me sometimes. So I'm constantly holding them back. And now I'll say with the Louis Lot, I didn't have to do that because the keys were doing that for me. Uh, so that's, that's kind of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so I guess those were the two major differences that I felt between these flutes. Uh, if you uh, heard anything else that I missed, uh, please uh, give me a shout out in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, um, please give us a like or a subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.